As AI as a topic, Imad went from zero to a hundred just extremely quickly in the last like two years or so. And you've experienced that entire surge of attention, activity, investment, all very, very quickly. Uh, what's that been like? What's it been like riding that wave? What did you learn about yourself, about the world, about other people? What was all of that whole thing like? So, you, you know, you have Web3 time, which is faster than yeah, human time. Totally. AI mm -hmm. time is like faster than that. Oh, boy. So, I do not uh, envy that. <laughs> yeah. Stability, we hired our first developer two years ago. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've had 330 million downloads of models we built or contributed to. And that's insane in like mm -hmm. two years. So I remember when Stable Fusion first came out in August of 2022 on uh, cumulative developer stars on GitHub, it overtook Bitcoin and Ethereum in like three months. And so there's being in a normal startup scale and hyperscaling, then there is that craziness. And then on top of that, there's all of a sudden you're like talking to the King of England or like, mm. you know, congressional people about how this can destroy the world or other things like that. That's just a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. What factors yeah. would you say played into all of that? Well, the fact that it's a transformative technology, right? I don't think we've ever seen a technology be adopted as quickly as this. Like with Web3, I think, you know, we're all passionate about decentralization, sovereignty, but, you know, we've been building a system largely outside the existing system. And all the money's been made and lost at the edges, and we've been bootstrapping economic incentives. Whereas this technology, all of a sudden, Google is a generative AI first company. Microsoft is a generative AI first company. NVIDIA is a $2 trillion generative AI first company. We've never seen anything like that before. I want to just get right into the deep end with this conversation about the pivot, mm -hmm. pivot maybe you would call it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, into the world of what we are now calling decentralized AI. I think that if you've been paying attention to this world inside of the crypto industry, it's been a theme for like coming up on a year now. Um, but it's also very interesting for, uh, to hear things from perhaps your perspective, who's coming from you know, the, the AI world specifically, rather than coming from, from inside crypto directly. So uh, overall, just like, what does it mean? What does decentralized AI mean to you? Yeah, so actually I've been in uh, Web3 since 2011. So, oh, um, wow, <laughs> earlier my, than us. <laughs> yeah, my college um, course mate was uh, Ben, who co-founded BitMEX with Arthur. Oh, wow. um, and then I built kind of TCR systems, did system audits, other things in 2016, 2017. Stability originally was actually meant to be a DAO of DAOs because we launched these communities to get the talent and then I bought the supercompute and others. So our mm. seed investors were Seed Club and Lemnis Capital and CFG, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. all crypto. But then I realized there was no intelligence in DAOs, so we had to build it ourselves first. Right. You know? Yes, this is something that we've <laughs> learned over the years as well. <laughs> Well, we have because we've, we've kind of not learned the mistakes of direct democracy and other things. And so DAOs are more like, you know, DOs, decentralized, not really decentralized organizations. Um, certainly not autonomous and smart contracts are a bit dumb as well. So, you know, it was kind of a whole journey because you've got these two paradigms of like autocracy and then distributing decentralization. And so I started DAO DAOs and I just quickly realized, crap, I have to centralize it. So I took control and then push forward the research agenda to build these things. But, you know, there was always this thing at the back of my mind, which is like, this is going to be used to teach your kids or my kids or whoever, right? It's going to be used to diagnose our healthcare. Who governs that? Like part of the debates we had about AGI, which is this very complicated debate, you know, like, is it Terminator? Is it Utopia? Everything like, who decides? Because if you look at what um, OpenAI says, for example, they say, AGI will end democracy, end capitalism and kill us all. And it'd be nice to have someone be part of that debate right, opposed to a few people in Silicon Valley, right? Like it may not be correct. Like I signed the FLI six month pause letter last summer, but who should be governing this? Who should be feeding in this data? Because data is the most important thing. These are always things that were at the back of my mind, but the focus over the last few years was let's build the best models of every type. So stability doesn't just do image models. We have the best protein folding model. We have the best video model other than Sora, because Sora is not released, but stable video is released. It beats Runway and Pika with the best 3D model. You can generate a 3D mesh in 0.5 seconds. All thanks to this combination of community, core team, and really differentiated background. So moving into decentralized space again, and going into this full time is because I was having to think about this, particularly as Sam Altman takes over OpenAI again, and mm -hmm. his reappointment to the board is a bit of a thumbs up, well, middle finger up to everyone, because he's like, the board can find me, now look, I'm in charge of the nonprofit again. Wait. There is no governance, even though I respect people there. Who should be running this and where does Web3 fit in this? It's the governance of the data. It's in the self-sovereign identity, self-sovereign AI, and it's in the distribution of this technology so it's available to everyone. 
Because right now, what you're seeing is increasing centralization. And are you going to out accelerate OpenAI when Microsoft's building a $100 billion supercomputer, you know, Project Stargate? Probably not, right? But do you need to build $100 billion supercomputers? Probably not. But you do need to take the best out of Web3 on a governance distribution and then alignment perspective. And I think we'll have safer, better AI that uplifts everyone as a result of that. One thing when you listen to um, Sam Altman talk about the structure of OpenAI and the board, uh, the word governance comes up quite frequently because uh, he's thinking very much in the future. He is thinking in a world in which this super intelligent machine does exist and all of a sudden uh, questions over its governance become critically important. Uh, and, you know, you know, so props to Sam for having this kind of uh, foresight. Similarly, in the crypto space, we also think about governance uh, quite a lot. Like DAOs, that's the conversation of governance, governance over networks, governance over apps. And so we are also experimenting in governance. And this is one of the doors, I will say, that Web3 has opened, but definitely not solved. And we've seen the governance failures of the OpenAI board. And you can look into crypto and also see plenty of governance failures. Uh, and so one thing we can say about crypto is like, at least we are trying, but we don't have necessarily any governance solutions here. Um, are, is, how are you thinking that this proceeds forward when one of the biggest issues in the world of um, artificial intelligence is governance? Well, look, we haven't figured out how to align humans. How are we going to align AI, right? Right. I think yeah. that's one of the things that we're always thinking about. I think what I've seen is that there's a lot of real thought being put towards governance, alignments, and things like that. But there are lots of misnomers, like big compute is a substitute for really bad data. You know, So mm -hmm. one of the things is data quality, data provenance, data tracking. We're seeing this wave of potential deep fake and superhuman generative AI. That requires, again, a provenance kind of solution. There's a distribution of the wealth around this. You see billion, trillion dollar companies kind of emerging from almost nothing. Who should kind of have some of that ownership? There is the question of attribution of data going in. We opted out a billion images from our image models. We thought it was the right thing to do. Didn't have to do it legally, et cetera. So nobody's got a solution because this is a problem for humanity. And it's happening at a time when entire industries are about to be completely revolutionized. I was on a panel with uh, Nat Friedman, the former CEO of GitHub, last Monday at Abundance 360, this conference by Pierre Diamandis, and he made this really good analogy because I said, well, I think that these like really talented graduates that can do just about everything and they try a bit too hard, they hallucinate. He's like, yeah, and we just discovered a continent called AI Atlantis, or Atlantis, if you want to call it that way, where there's 100 billion of them. That's economic upheaval. You know, so what I'm really looking at is I believe that every nation should have their own AIs and data sets that they own because no government will run on closed AI. It'll be open and transparent because you have to know what the curriculum is. You have to know you are what you eat. And then in every sector, there's a transformation that occurs from this, but we need to coordinate the response because we don't know how fast it happens. Because one of the things that's happening here is like, oh, just over a year ago when ChatGPT came, every head teacher in the world had to answer the same question. I can't set essays for homework again, or can I? And we're seeing a lot of those things happening right now. And so my basic move here is to move towards building a substrate for collective intelligence as opposed to collected intelligence, amplified human intelligence versus AGI, distributing the benefits and getting together the smartest people, hopefully, that can figure out what the practical governance of these data sets, these models and other things are, because they impact society. And that's mm -hmm. a discussion that has to be had. And it should be the smartest, most passionate people of every nation looking out for their nations. It should be the smartest, most passionate people in healthcare and education and others thinking, how can we fundamentally change this for good? You know, leveraging this technology that is transformative. And I can talk about that, you know, and it has to be people that have a holistic view thinking about, oh my God, well, finance is about to be messed up completely, as an example. And again, I can dig into that. What do we do about it? And actually building not only the uh, creation bit, but the defense bits around this as well. Like our infrastructure, you saw the XZ kind of thing is incredibly susceptible to attacks from this. And so mm -hmm. we have to build a new robust infrastructure incorporating all these elements. And I think, again, the only way to do that is not a small dedicated team in Silicon Valley. It's distributed teams of people working around the world solving this problem, which is the real Manhattan project. But it's not against the Russians or anything like that. It's against our sclerotic infrastructure and very unpleasant race conditions. Also, I don't think that there's very few bad people in this as well. So even though, you know, I crap on OpenAI and things like that, there are a lot of passionate people trying super hard there. It's just, again, 
they're caught in very bad local maxima because it is so powerful. The natural thing is to control, control, control. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, also the hardest thing to, to give up as well. Your, your quote, yeah. you're not going to be centralized AI with more centralized AI. There's uh, a number of different ways I could read into that. Like first, is that like your mission? Is that a, a, a goal that you have personally is to beat centralized AI? Yeah, I mean, like, I ran a China HS fund and I was a video game investor, and then it suddenly became the China Social Credit Score. And mm. that's a vision mm. of the future, gamified life, you know? And some people are happy with that. But I see both basically going to 1984 on steroids if you've got a few people controlling this amazingly powerful technology and deciding when it's going to happen. You know, who gets it? Like, when does this technology, when does AGI get to Pakistan or Bangladesh? Well, never, because they can't be trusted with it, right? But then this AGI, you know, whatever you may define it as, could be used to educate every child or give universal healthcare. So who gets to make those decisions? So my thing was AI for the people, by the people. Like um, I was, in 2020, I was leading one of the United Nations backed AI initiatives against COVID-19. I was lead architect to organize global COVID knowledge and make it accessible through AI. And pretty much every AI company that promised to back me didn't give me the technology because it was dangerous. And I was like, we're saving mm -hmm. lives. And that's the origins of stability and how it moved to this, you know? But like I said, we're not quite mature enough. And this is one of the fascinating things as you look at the L2 roll-ups, as you look at the data authenticity things, Web3 has grown up a lot. Like there are actually primitives now that are emerging that could be a substrate for collective decentralized distributed AI by the people for the people. Whereas on the centralized thing, again, it's a different paradigm, which is the all powerful AGI. So right. my thing is, you can't beat centralized AI with another centralized organization. I think what we should build for an AGI, this generalized intelligence, is the human collective intelligence, amplified human intelligence. Something that uplifts us all and acts like a swarm. The alternative picture being presented here by DeepMind, OpenAI, and others is the machine god. You know, and who controls machine god? I think it's impossible to control machine god. You know, because how do you control someone more capable than me? You remove its freedom. And I don't really feel very comfortable with that. Instead, I'd rather build better data sets that feed that machine god or collective intelligence, bring this technology to everyone so we can have robust infrastructure that's battle tested, and really focus on uplifting humanity through universal healthcare, education, proper financial rails, and self-sovereign AI to go with self-sovereign identity. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.